Polar Scout emergency post is out here on the sea ice. Aha! Uh -huh. There it is! Let's go! I'll just knock on the... Oh! Captain Barnacles! It's good to see you back in the old post, sir. Quasi, Peso, meet Tracker. Tracker, meet... The Octonaut guys. I mean, the Octonauts. I'm Quasi. And I'm Peso. Welcome to the Polar Scout Emergency Post. Tracker's in charge here, and he does an excellent job. I was trained by the best. That's you and Captain Barnacles. Yep. Before he was captain of the Octonauts, he trained Polar Scouts like me for the emergency service. What kind of work do you do at this post, matey? Okay, this is my listening station. When someone sends out a call for help in the Arctic, it's my job to hear it and make sure they get the help they need. And that's why we're going to set up a connection between this emergency post and the Octopod. So we can work together to help as many creatures as possible. Ready to test the link? Ready, sir. Dashie here, Captain. Tracker, meet Dashie. She's our computer expert aboard the Octopod. Nice to meet you, Tracker. Really nice to meet you. So, how's the signal? Good. Okay, that's proper help. And where's it coming from? It's... well, that's weird. It's not coming from the Arctic. It's coming from the opposite side of the world. The Antarctic? Yeah, and... Whoa, Captain, it's coming from an old ice research station that's been shut down for years. So there shouldn't be anyone living at that station at all. But someone's sending a call for help. And someone needs to answer it. Tracker, stand by. Yes, sir. Octonauts to the HQ. Octonauts, our mission is to answer a mysterious call for help from the other side of the world. Tracker? Right, sir. I'm sending through a map now. Here we are in the Arctic. The call for help came from this ice research station in the Antarctic. And who lives at the station? Tracker says it's been shut down for years. And nobody's heard a peep from it until now, mateys. Dashie, set a course for the Antarctic. Tracker, we'll keep you posted. Cool. I mean right, sir. And good luck. Tracker out. Activating launch. Antarctica. Octonauts to the GUP S. We've come all the way from the Arctic to the Antarctic, but really, what's the difference? Ah, oh, there are lots of differences, Quasi. For one thing, polar bears live only in the Arctic. And penguins live in the Antarctic. And just look at the map. The Arctic is north. The Antarctic is south. When it's winter in the Arctic, it's summer in the Antarctic. The Arctic is a frozen ocean surrounded by land. The Antarctic is a frozen land surrounded by ocean. They're both too cold for cats. But the Antarctic is even colder than the Arctic. The Antarctic is the coldest place on Earth all year round. <sighs> Me whiskers are shivering just thinking about it. Have to cook a warm -a -warm -a. Hot chocolate. That should warm me up. Thanks, Tunip. Phew! What was that? I'm not sure. Whatever it is, we're surrounded. And one of us heading straight for us. Hey, <laughs> sir? Uju! Octonauts, this is my cousin, Uju. He's an Adeli penguin. What are you doing out here? We're making a big once a year journey from the sea back to our nesting grounds on the land. That can't be an easy trip. No, 
But I've seen so many amazing things along the way. <gasps> Look at the beautiful shape of this ice. Uju, please keep up with the rest of the group. Oh, but look who I found! Cousin Peso. So nice to see you. I wish we had time to talk. We have to get to our nesting ground soon. And after this big swim, we still have a long march across the land. I understand. Goodbye, Uju. Safe journey, everyone. Thanks, Bye, Peso. Peso. Say hello to your family for us. Ah, oh, you penguins make the Antarctic seem a little friendlier, matey. <laughs> everyone, it's time to take the Gup S on to land. Settle in and get comfortable. We've got a long trip ahead of us. We should be getting close to the ice research station. Keep your eyes peeled, everyone. It's difficult to see anything out there. Who knows, mateys? With all this wind and snow, the station may have disappeared without a trace. Captain! Flashing light! Straight ahead! I think we've found our research station. Let's see if anyone's home. In all this wind and snow, it's easy to get lost. So everyone, hold on to this rope. That way we'll stay together. Everybody ready? Wait, where's my... Cutter-cutter? Thanks, matey. See you later. All right, Octonauts. Let's move out. Somebody had to eat and run. Ah, somebody's been filling up a lot of notebooks. Uh, getting closer. Very loud now. Must be deep down in the ice. Oh! Uh, what was that? Everybody out! Here, grab on! Is everyone okay? Safe and sound, Captain. But we still don't know who called for help. Look, Captain. Tracks. Mm. These tracks are the paw prints of an Arctic fox. But that doesn't make sense, Captain. Arctic foxes don't live in the Antarctic. Let's see where these lead. Don't believe it, Professor Natquick? <laughs> I don't believe it. Barnacles. <laughs> Did you call for help? Yes, yes. I was beginning to think that nobody heard me. <laughs> Octonauts, this is Professor Natquick. When I was a young polar scout, he taught me how to do field research in the Arctic. And I'm happy to see you remember what I taught you. How to recognize tracks, how to listen for sounds that others miss, and... <laughs> how to dodge one of my surprise novels. <laughs> Very good, Barnacles. Thanks. But what are you doing so far from home, Professor Natquick? 
I came here to do research in the Antarctic many years ago. No one knew you were still here. My radio broke long ago, but I couldn't leave. I'm on the edge of amazing discovery, but it may soon be lost. Lost? Why? Follow me. Click, click. This is why I called for help. <gasps> I realized that the ice was moving and pulling the station into this enormous ice chasm. When it falls in, all of your work goes with it and disappears forever. As you can see, it could fall in at any moment. Then we've no time to lose. Tweak. We can't pull this ass research station to safety faster than you can say bunch of munchy crunchy frozen carrots! Octonauts, let's do this! Octonauts, you saved the station and my life's work. Now I can share my amazing discovery. Follow me. Click, click. I always pounce with a chance to investigate a strange new sound. When I arrived in Antarctica, I discovered this. <gasps> the bloop sound. But who or what was making it? That was question. I tracked the sound deep in the ice until finally I discovered that the mysterious bloop is made by... A humongous blooptopus. No, it's... A gigantic bloopzilla. No. A monstrous blooperoceros. No, no. The bloop sound is made by enormous ice quakes. Ice quakes? Yes, yes. It's the sound the ice makes when it breaks and moves. Congratulations, Professor Nepquick. That's quite a... Shh, listen. Do you hear that? Yeah. I'm afraid we don't have your Arctic Fox hearing. Ah, yes. Here, listen through speakers. Ah, yes. I hear it now. What? What is it? Mm, sounds like the pitter-patter of lots of little feet. No, no. It's not Peter Potter, it's a Woodle Waddle. A Woodle Waddle? But what Woodle Waddles? My cousins, the Adeli Penguins, they Woodle Waddle. They're heading back. And they could be heading straight for the ice chasm. Captain, with the wind blowing all the snow around, my cousins might not see the chasm before it's too late. They could fall in. We need to warn them to stay back. Everyone, to the Gup S. <laughs> Ready to go. They should be bright enough so the Adelie penguins can see them even through the snow. Good work, Tweak. Now, we just have to make sure our timing is right. Dashy? The radar shows that the Adelie penguins are close to the chasm. All right, Peso. Let's send up the flares. On my count. Three, two, one. Ooh, what's that? Did you see those lights? Attention, Adelie Penguins! This is your cousin Peso speaking. It's Peso! What's he saying? Shh, please, stay where you are and don't go any further or you'll fall into an ice chasm. Everybody stop! All right, thanks, Peso. We'll stay where we are. But we still have to get to our nesting grounds. Is there some way that they can go around the ice chasm? The ice chasm is miles long. Going around it would take a long time. Captain, they're already tired from their long trip from the sea onto the land. If they have to travel extra miles around this chasm, I'm not sure all of them will make it. Then we'll just have to find a way to get them over this ice chasm. The bridge might work, but what can we make it out of? There's nothing but snow and ice in this scurvy place, and it takes more than that to build a bridge. I need something to warm me up. Ah, look, it's so cold that my hot chocolate freezes as soon as I pour it. Quasi, you're a genius. I am? Cap, I know just how we're gonna make a bridge. First, we drill a tunnel through the ice. 
and the heated drill will melt the ice into water as we go. Then the water will pour out from our side of the chasm, and as it hits the other side, it'll freeze up. Just like my hot chocolate. Octonauts, let's make an ice bridge. I believe everyone's here. Uh, oh, except... Hold on. Where's Ooh. Wow. Uju! Hi, Peso. Look at these amazing icicles. And over here, oh, the ice is waving. You need to hurry and cross the bridge now. Yes. Quick, quick! You never know when another ice crack could hit. Come on, you do. No time for stopping. Speed waddle. All right, I'm coming. Ice crack! Oh, oh, oh. oh Wait! I hear rustling sound from somewhere in the ice castle. Yes, yes. That's definitely the sound of penguin flippers. He's alive. Oh, how can we get him out? If only we could fly. Poor Ruju. Don't worry, penguins. We'll save him. Octonauts, one of us will have to go down after him. I'm ready to go, Captain. I'd like to go. Uju may be hurt and need medical help right away. Agreed. Peso, the rest of the team will lower you down to Uju. And we'll pull both of you back up safe and sound. That's a promise, matey. Octonauts, let's set up the rescue rope. All ready here. Ready. 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 On rope, going down. Uju, can you hear me? Hey, sir. I'm down here. Yes, I'm coming for you. Did I fall all the way to the bottom? No, you were lucky. You landed on a ledge. Are you hurt? My flippers are fine, but I, I can't move my foot. Hold on. I'm almost there. <sighs> Peso! Ah! Ah! You... <laughs> Dig in! Good. Hold your positions. Peso, are you okay? Well, Captain, I'm at the end of my rope. And so is Uju. You got me! Yes, I've got you. Captain, bring us up. Well done, Peso. Octonauts, slow and steady with the rope. Good work, Octonauts. And especially you, Peso. I've never seen flippers that fast. Just doing my job. And now, your foot needs a proper bandage. <laughs> it's time to finish our trip back to the nesting grounds. Oh, dear. Uju shouldn't waddle on his foot for a few more days. I think we can help with that. Forward, waddle! Goodbye. Goodbye. How fast can this thing go? Let's find out, matey. <laughs> Fantastic! Well, Professor Natquick, are you ready to get back to work? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> but I'm afraid this old ice research station is falling apart. Hmm. What do you think, Twig? Well, 
is definitely a fixer-upper. So, let's fix her up. Just give me about eight weeks in two days. <laughs> this is wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Glad you like it. I call it the Gup Eye. The eye is for us. I've put in solar panels and these turbines to harness the wind for power. The whole station is on snow treads now, so you can move it away from any ice chasm that suddenly opens up. <laughs> but that's not all. Go ahead and raise her up, Dashie! These legs can lift the station up high if the snow gets too deep. <laughs> Incredible! If you like the outside, you'll love what's inside. Come on! Your very own hot chocolate machine! But that's not the best new feature. It's not. We've set up special pole-to-pole -pole communications. Dashy. This is the Arctic Polar Scout Emergency Post. Tracker here. Tracker, meet Professor Natquick of the Antarctic Ice Research Station, now known as the Gup I. Good to meet you, Tracker. Ooh, listen. A mysterious new sound. I hear it too. But who or what is making it? That is question. Oh, I believe it was the sound of a humongous slurptopus. Whoops. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Professor, now that mystery is solved, how would you like a cup of hot chocolate? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, please. Me too. I'm ready for seconds. <laughs> Good work, Tweak. Oh, yummy. <laughs> Delicious. Say, ah. Uh... Looks good. Great. Now, can you tell me how many flippers I'm holding up? <laughs> Two. That's right. You're a completely healthy fish. Next. Oh, no. Let me take a look at that. Don't worry. My name's Peso. I'm an octonaut and a medic. I help creatures who are hurt or sick. If you let me bandage that claw, it will feel better. Ah, good as new. These Arctic waters are cold. I'd better head back to the octopod and warm up. Whoops! My medical bag! Oh no! I've got to find it! Aha! Hmm. Just a clam. I know it's down here somewhere. <gasps> a walrus! He's using his whiskers to find clams. Maybe he can help me find my medical bag. Oh, thank you. I've been... Oh, hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> what a weird clam. Hey, the chief might like that. Wait, come back. That's not a clam. It's my medical bag. Captain. Go ahead, Peso. Captain, my medical bag has been taken <gasps> by a walrus. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, can anyone think of why a walrus would take Peso's medical bag? He must have thought it was a clam. Yes, they do love to eat clams, Captain. It had all my bandages and medicine. Without my medical bag, I can't help creatures feel better. Don't worry, Peso. We're going to find that walrus. We'll march right up to that whiskery lump and make him give back your medical bag. Yow! Peso, quasi, to the Gup A. Open the octahatch, Tweak. Right away, Cap. A 
Ahoy! One whiskery walrus right ahead. We must be getting close to a walrus colony where they live. Whoa! That's a lot of walruses. If your bag's in there, we'll find it. <clears throat> um, hello there. I believe there's been a misunderstanding. You see... Hey, you guys aren't walruses. You got that right. We're octonauts. This is our colony. Walruses only. Um, easy now. We just want to... All right, back off. Move on. Oh, Move well, on. Well, well, uh, uh, now, wait, 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 wait. Enjoy the dip. So much for marching right up to them. <laughs> got me when I wasn't ready. A vast, you scurvy walruses. Hmm. There's got to be another way for us to get into the walrus colony. And then, splash, we all fell into the water. Hmm. Walruses don't like to share their home with other creatures. Sounds like if you're not a walrus, you're not getting in. But if we looked like a walrus and acted like a walrus... Maybe we could sneak in. And find my medical bag. Tweak, we're going to need your help. Sure thing, Cap. Octonauts, Operation Octo Walrus begins now. Let's go. Tweak's costume will fool them. If it'll get my medical bag back, it's worth a try. Fair enough. Come in, Shellington. This is Barnacles. We're sneaking into the walrus colony now. Excellent. Now it's very important that you act like a walrus. Don't let them push you around. Huh. Must be a new guy. Walruses say hello by blowing in each other's faces. Blow back or they'll think you're being mood. Oh, um... <gasps> That's all you've got. <sighs> um, we need to blow harder. Everybody, one, two, three... <gasps> <gasps> now that's more like it. Nice to meet you. If you've got any extra clams, give them to the chief. He's hungry. We've all got to share our food until he feels better and can find his own. Right. Thanks for the tip. It's working. We've made it inside the colony. One of Peso's stickers. We must be getting close. Keep your eyes peeled. You're stepping on me tail. Sorry, but it's hard when they keep smooshing up against us. Ah, typical walrus behaviour. They love to get cosy and cuddle with one another. Cosy isn't quite the word for it. Hmm, that's better. Don't get too relaxed. Aye, what's this? A new guy? That's the one who took my medical bag. <sighs> Come in, Shellington. We've got an angry walrus heading right for us. Jumping jellyfish, it's a walrus challenge. <sighs> He wants to see who's bigger and tougher. If we want him to tell us where the bag is, we'll have to challenge him back. We could be bigger and tougher than he is. Hop on me shoulders, Captain. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> bigger? <laughs> Are you okay, Peso? Um, I'm okay. Okay, okay. You're bigger than I thought. Where is the medical bag? M medical bag? It's white and uh, it opens up and inside... Oh, you mean uh, the funny white clam that I found? I gave it to the chief to try and cheer him up. Which one is the chief? The chief is probably the biggest walrus with the biggest tusks. Aha! Bring him on! Careful. Quasi, try to get back into position. Huh? I can't get back in position while you're sitting on my... Intruders! Oh, run! Captain, come in. What's going on? Have you located the chief yet? Shellington, this really isn't a good time. <laughs> Take them to the chief. At least we get to meet the chief. Chief, 
What are you doing in our colony? Speak. Uh, please, we didn't mean to bother you. We're just looking for Peso's bag. You mean that strange white clam? That's it, my medical bag. Your medical bag? I'm the Chief Walrus. It's mine. We don't want any trouble, Chief, but that bag belongs to my friend Peso. You think you can just waddle into my colony and tell me what to do? Oh no, his flipper. Stop! You shouldn't be walking around on a hurt flipper. If it's not bandaged right now, it will only get worse and worse until... Oh, my flipper really does hurt. Can you tell me what happened? Well, I twisted it the other day, and now I can't even swim. That's why everybody's been bringing you clams to eat. Do you think you can do anything for me? Hmm. One twisted flipper. I'll need my medical bag. Uh, all right. Here. Oh. There. Good as new. Hey. Thank you. It feels better already. I don't know what I would have done without you. And I don't know what I would have done without my medical bag. Now remember, you take it easy on that flipper. I will. And you come back to visit whenever you like. I hereby declare you all honorary walruses. Will you join us in the official walrus cheer? <laughs> 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 Captain Barnacles to Shellington and Dashy. How's it going up there? Um, a bit slowly, Captain. This Arctic ice is so thick, it's taking our sonic slicer forever to cut through it. Almost. Just a little more. There! We made it through. We're heading up now to gather the ice samples, Captain. Just try to be quick. The hole you made in the ice will freeze over very fast and you won't be able to get back into the, um... Back into the water. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll be quick. Over and out. Who's making that music, Captain? I'm not sure, Quasi, but it certainly is making it hard to work. Let's investigate. me hearty. <laughs> I didn't know you were so good at playing music. Thank you. This xylophone was a present from my Aunt Pepita. Well, you're certainly getting good, but, uh, Peso, do you think you could take a break so we can... This is Shellington calling the Octopod. Come in, Octopod. Barnacles here. Everything okay up there? Captain, we found another hole. Another hole in the ice? Yes, but that's not all. I'm sending a video through to you now, Captain. They're beluga whales, Captain. Yes, I see. But uh, what are they doing? They appear to be trapped under the pack ice. They should be in open water. Can you ask them if they need help? I'll try, but belugas are very shy creatures. Wait, please! I'm Shellington, and this is Dashi. We are the Octonauts. We might be able to help you. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. What are you doing all the way out here, under the pack ice? The water froze over us. We have to stay near this hole. But why do you need the hole? Have to breathe. Have to breathe. But why can't you just swim back out to the open water, where there isn't any ice? Too far away. Can't swim that far without breathing. Have to stay near the hole. Shellington, what do you make of this? The belugas are trapped. There's ice all around them and only a small hole where they can come up to breathe. 
And this hole is starting to freeze over too. It's getting smaller and smaller. We have to rescue those belugas right away. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Yow! Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, our mission is to lead the belugas back to open water where there's no ice. But we need something that can cut a path through the ice so that they can breathe along the way. Yeah, what about the sonic slicers? They're too slow. We need to act fast before the beluga's Whoa. breathing hole freezes Whoa. over. I think I have just the thing, Cap. Okay, Tweak, let's see if your icebreaker attachment works. The ice isn't breaking. Pack ice is really thick. It takes a lot to break it. Open water. Now, if I can just get those belugas to follow me. Belugas, this path will lead you to open waters. Have to stay near the hole where it's safe and quiet. Belugas, please follow me before the ice freezes over. Oh, no. oh dear, this is not good at all. Hmm. The belugas don't seem to want to leave their breathing hole. If only they would follow Captain Barnacles. <gasps> I've got it! Fish biscuits! What's your plan, Quasi? Well, I reckon these belugas must be getting pretty hungry by now. So I brought them a little fish biscuit snack. Good to see you tuning. Belugas, follow me! It's fish biscuit feast time! Yeah! Yes, it's working! Now shiver me whiskers. Those little fishies think this is food for them. Go away! Go on! Go! Go! Leave it alone! Belugas, follow me! It's dinner time! Too many scary noises have to stay by the hall where it's safe. Why aren't they following me? Belugas, like all whales, are scared of loud, strange noises. So, the sound of the gup sea cracking the ice and the sound of, well, quasi, probably scared them. How can we show them that this path to open water is safe? Professor Inkling, any ideas? I know exactly what sounds will make the belugas follow you. An old whale song recording. They'll hear their own sounds and follow right along. It's working! <laughs> oh, oh, it, uh, oh. oh, my. We're losing them again. We've got to do something, Captain. The path is already starting to freeze over. That noise they make, that sounded a little bit like... Peso's music. Peso, we need you and your xylophone out here right away. Captain, are you sure this is the best time for music? This is exactly the time for music. Your music. Captain, I'm ready to play. All right, Peso. It's showtime. It's working. 
sound xylophone playing sounds just like the Beluga song. You have to stay close to the hole where it's safe. But those sounds are so nice. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. It's okay. We can breathe along this path. If we follow the nice sounds down the path, we won't be stuck here anymore. Here we are, open water. Great work, Peso. Thank you, Octonauts. Sorry we didn't follow you at first. We belugas are always a bit shy around creatures we don't know, and all those loud noises scared us. Well, now we know each other. And we love your music. It sounds just like ours. Come on, everyone join in. Two, three, four. Ah, I don't know how to sing like a beluga. Oh, come on, Quasi. It's easy. Goodbye, Octonauts. Thanks again. Goodbye, Belugas. Safe journey now. Goodbye. <laughs> Antarctica straight ahead, Captain. Everyone, prepare for ice landing in three, two, one. Everyone ready to get started? I am, Captain. I can't wait to see what creatures live up here on the ice. Quasi, you and Peso will help Shellington watch the ice for creatures. <sighs> You'd have to have coconuts for brains to live here in Antarctica. Can anyone see any creatures out there? Not yet. It's all just white, white, white... And red! Shiver me whiskers! There's something red straight ahead! <gasps> Jumping jellyfish! It looks like a waterfall made out of ice. But why is the ice red? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before. Fire up the ice spy. The ice spy will show us what's under the ice. A vast! There's a lake down there. That must be where the red ice is coming from. The ice is very thick. Oh, the lake must have been sealed under it for millions of years. Who knows what creatures might live down there? Let's take a look. Peso, detach Octo Sled and activate ice drill. Aye, aye, Captain. Here we go. Captain, the ice is too thick. The drill can't take it. We're not giving up yet. Send more heat to the drill. OK, Captain. Almost there. Captain, the drill is broken. Aye, but we reached the lake. The drill will have to wait. Shellington, are you ready to head outside and... Oh, oh. <laughs> That's the spirit, matey. Hurry, I can't wait to see what's down there. Oh! Take it slowly, Shellington. One careless move out here and we could be in trouble. Yeah! Oh, secret lake, here I come! Amazing. No one has ever seen this place before. Have you any idea why the water's red, Shellington? Hmm. The water contains tiny bits of rusty iron. That's why it's so red. There's rust in the water. Careful! It would be easy to get lost down here. Octonauts, stay close. Ah, the water is also very salty. And cold! And dark! Ah, I don't think any creatures could survive down here. Sorry, Shellington. We'd better get back to the Gup S. Ah, I might as well take a water sample first. Cheer up, Shellington. 
We did find this amazing red waterfall. And we learned what makes it red. And we're all ship-shape and toasty warm again. Uh, I suppose so. But I would have loved to have found a creature down there, even just one. It's been a long day. We'll rest here before we head home. Ah, oh, but it's still light outside. Remember, in Antarctica, it doesn't get dark at this time of year. Not even at night. <sighs> How am I supposed to sleep if it's not dark? Aha! Hello? Huh? Oh. Hello? <gasps> what? I must be hearing things. Maybe I need some sleep. Hello? Over here. Huh? <gasps> Jumping jellyfish. No, not jellyfish. Microbe. Name's Mervyn. I'm a teeny tiny microbe. I'm so small, you can't see me with just your eyes. <laughs> nice to meet you. But where did you come from? From the Red Lake, under the ice, of course. That's my home. Uh, I didn't think anything could live down there. It's so cold and dark. Oh, but it's just right for me. I don't mind that it's cold and dark at all. <laughs> what about you? Is this where you live? Uh, no, this is the Gup S. My name is Shellington. I'm an octonaut. An octo-what? <laughs> oh, I want to hear all about it, but oh dear. Mervyn, what's wrong? It's just a little bit warm and bright up here. I think you'd better take me back down to the lake. Already? But I haven't introduced you to the others. Oh, hurry, Shellington. <laughs> I'm boiling hot in here. Oh, uh, don't worry, Mervyn. I'll get you home. Uh, this ice hole feels smaller than last time. Keep going. I'm feeling cooler already. <laughs> oh. That's more like it. Oh, thank you, Shellington. Come on, there's so much I want to show you. Well, uh, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have a quick look around. Great! <laughs> Follow me. Oh, you have to meet the others. Others? A little further. A little further. Jumping jellyfish. Shellington, meet the other microbes. There's so many of you. But how do you find enough food down here? Oh, we don't need food. We get all the energy we need from the rust in the water. Yeah, we eat rust, man. Oh, that's Jeb. This is Shirley. Oh, and say hi to Alice. Hi, Alice. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you. I can't wait to tell the others about you. <laughs> uh, oh. If I can find my way back out of here. Was the ice hole this way? Or was it that way? Oh, that's not good. Uh, Mayday! Mayday! Shellington to Guppes! Come in, please! Help! Huh? Mayday! Come in! Shellington to Guppes! What was Come that? Come in, please! Uh, where am I? Captain Barnacles, do you read me? Shellington, where are you? Captain, I'm in the lake. Tiny creatures. Captain, help! Yeah! Oh. Quasi and Peso to the ice hole! Octonauts, Shellington is stranded down in the ice lake. We have to rescue him. The temperature is dropping fast. If the hole freezes over, there'll be no way to get him out. Then there's no time to lose. Quasi, you're with me. Peso, you stay here and keep your eye on the ice hole. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> oh, this is taking forever, Captain. I think I know a faster way down. Agreed. On three. One, two, three. Yeah! No sign of him, Captain. Shellington! Shellington! Captain Barnacles! Did you hear that? Nah. It's just the cold playing tricks with your mind. There it is again. What was it Shellington said? Something about tiny creatures. 
follow those voices. Shellington? Oh, dear. Shellington! <gasps> Shellington! Captain, Quasi, how did you find me? We showed them the way. That's Mervyn. He lives down here with all his microbe friends. The cold, dark water doesn't bother them at all. Hello. Hey. I'll be a sea monkey's uncle. Captain, come in. The ice hole is closing fast. Hurry. Quasi, Shellington, we'd better get out of here. Already? This is the most excitement we've had down here in, like, a million years. Maybe two. Thanks for your help, Mervyn. Don't worry. We'll come back and visit sometime. Bye. 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 Thank you. Now let's eat some more rust, man. Quick, before the hole freezes over completely. Peso, <laughs> lower the rescue line. Ooh. Right, Peso, pull us up. Hold on tight. Driving, Peso. Thank you, Captain. I still can't believe you found actual living creatures down there, Shellington. How many microbes do you think were down there? Oh, well, let's see. Carry the two, multiply by five, about 10,003,062. Oh, no, wait, I forgot about that big one with the squiggly tail. Uh oh, Captain, rocks and rough waters ahead. Dashi, activate steering wheel. All clear, Captain. Thanks, Dashi. Should be smooth sailing ahead. Well, at least until we hit the Roaring Forties. The Roaring Forties? The Roaring Forties are a part of the ocean with very rough water and powerful waves. Ooh. Nothing to worry about, Peso. I've piloted the octopod safely through these waters many times before. How did you learn to pilot the octopod so well, Captain? Practice. Lots of practice. And lots of late nights spent reading this manual. <laughs> How to pilot the octopod, third edition, written by Captain Barnacles. It covers everything I've learned about piloting the octopod. In fact, Peso, it might be a good idea for you to give it a read. Me? But I'm a medic. Well, you never know when we might need a backup pilot. Ooh. All right, I'll read it. I'm not sure I'll understand any of it, but I'll try. Ah, all clean, me hearty. Huh? Well, now. This shell would make a fine addition to me collection. Who are you calling a shell? I'm a cold snail, see? Uh, nobody puts me in a collection, see? Sorry, little fella. I, I just... <laughs> ah! <laughs> I feel... I feel kind of funny. Uh... What's going on out here? <gasps> oh, me, oh, my. Come in, Peso. There's something wrong with Quasi. Don't worry, Quasi. You're going to be all right. What could have caused this, Peso? I'm not sure. It's almost like he's been poisoned. But by what? It stung me. What stung you, Quasi? No, Quasi didn't sting me. I'm Quasi. Tunip was there when it happened, Cap. Tell him what you saw. He says it had a swirly shell about this big. Was this the creature? Jumping jellyfish. What is it, Shellington? It's a cone snail. No wonder Quasi is acting so strange. A cone snail sting is full of poison. And it must still be here, somewhere on the ship. We'd better find it before anyone else gets stung. Shellington, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, the 
a dangerous cone snail somewhere aboard the ship. We need to find it and release it back into the water. Cone snail, you say? Ah, yes. Little fellows that can sting you with tiny harpoons. And they have up to 20 harpoons ready to fire, each full of poison that can make you very sick. Captain, there's no medicine for a cone snail sting. Time and rest are the only cure. But why would it sting Quasi? It was probably just scared and trying to protect itself. We'll have to be very, very careful around it. Octonauts, let's split up and find that cone snail. Uh, nobody captures me, you see. Octonauts, any sign of the cone snail? Not yet, Cap. Anyone else? No. <laughs> oh, no. Inkling, Dashy and Shellington have all been stung. Hey, so, I'm bringing three more patients to the sick bay. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh. Tweak, the cone snail must be somewhere in the octo shoots. I need you to close them off. On it, Cap. I'll let you know as soon as... <gasps> Tweak, are you all right? Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh. Peso, you'd better prepare one more bed. Oh. How are you doing, Peso? This is a lot of patients to take care of at once. Don't worry, Captain. I'm a medic. Taking care of people is what I do. Luckily, I have some help. <laughs> hmm. He must be in the vents. Right, I'm going after him. Uh -huh. Hey, watch it! What's the big idea? Captain, you did it! Oh, oh no, you were stung. Just rest easy, Captain. Everything will be... Oh, dear. What's happening? Uh, ship's entering the Roaring Forties. Very rough water. Need to get through. No, Captain. You're uh, too weak. Oh, oh, yes. Somebody has to pilot the ship. And that person is you, Peso. Me? <laughs> Peso, use the manual. You can do this. But... But, Captain... You've learned 317 ways to bandage an injured fin. You've performed crevectomies in the frozen Arctic. Oh. Those are medic skills. And I've done those things lots of times. But there was a first time. We're all counting on you. I... I... I have to try. Tunip, keep an eye on my patience. <laughs> Activate steering wheel and turn on the octo lift. Whoa! Captain, I made it to the steering wheel. Uh oh, big rock. What do I do? It says don't steer, but I have to steer around the rock or we crash. Keep one hand on the wheel, use the other to engage the rudder. You can do this, Peso. Engage! Rudder! Whoa! Maybe I can do this! Whoa! I can't do this! What do I do? Rocks and rough waters. It's not in here. What do I do? You do the one thing that isn't in the manual. Trust yourself. Trust myself? But I'm a medic. I don't pilot ships. I take care of people. Hold on. I am taking care of people. Everybody on board the Octopod is counting on me. I can do this! Oh. <laughs> 
Snail. Loose on ship. Peso's in danger. the ship back to autopilot and check on my patience. Ah! Peso, look out! Cone snail! Huh? Ah! Peso! I'm, I'm all right. Wow, the ship's manual really did come in handy in more ways than one. Sorry for all the trouble. I was scared, see? And I was only trying to protect myself, see? No hard feelings, eh? No, just a bit of a sore paw. Tweak, open the octo hatch so our cone snail friend can go free. Sure thing, Cap. See you later, see? Bye bye. 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 Whee! Peso, I was very proud of you today. You saved the ship. I'm just glad everyone's feeling better. Uh... You might want to tell that to them vegetables, matey. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm we have some amazing photos of Antarctic sea life, thanks to the new cameras on the gaps, Captain. Excellent, Dashi. And who knows what else we might find today? <laughs> Monsters in the ocean! Swim for your lives! Monsters? Three of them at least! The one I saw was just a giant head with teeth! The one I saw was a giant squirmy sea serpent! The one I saw, I couldn't even see the whole thing! That's how huge it was! And where exactly did you spy these hideous creatures of the deep? Close by! Gotta keep moving! We don't want to run into those monsters again! <laughs> Monsters. Peso, Quasi, let's investigate. All right, everyone, keep your eyes peeled and make sure your gup cams are turned off. I just saw what appears to be a big-headed monster, exactly like the one described by the first dolphin. <gasps> I just saw the sea serpent monster the other dolphin saw. Ah, just me luck. I haven't seen hide enough fin of anything monstrous. But I do now. It's the big one, mateys, and she's coming right at me. Shiver me whiskers. Let's see what the photos from the gub cans can tell us. That's the monster I saw. Yes, and that's the one I saw. And that big whatever it is is the third monster. Hmm, I'm not so sure there were three monsters. Let me try something. <laughs> It's a crocodile. It's a saltwater crocodile. The world's largest crocodile. It's as big as a bus. And it's a long way from home. Saltwater crocodiles normally live in places like Australia. That's over a thousand miles away. Hmm. It's not unusual for saltwater crocodiles to travel far out to sea looking for food. But I've never heard of one spotted in the Antarctic Ocean. Oh no, he must be lost. And freezing. Saltwater crocodiles are reptiles. They stay healthy by moving to different places when they need to warm up or cool down. If they get too hot, they move to a cooler place. And if they get too cold, they move to a warmer place. But here in the Antarctic, there's no place he can go to warm up. He won't be able to survive this extreme cold for long. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have a saltwater crocodile who is lost and in danger from the icy cold water. Our mission is to find him and take him home. Quasi, peso, to the guts. 
Remember, Octonauts, this is a huge creature we're looking for. If it feels threatened or scared, it may attack us. Aye, and the way it nearly swatted me gun, that tail could crush us like a tin can. It would more likely chomp you with its massive jaws and teeth. Ooh. Keep a sharp lookout, me hearties. That crop could be lurking anywhere. Below us, behind us, or above us. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> And he might be injured. Let's take a closer look. He's not moving. He doesn't seem to be breathing. I've got to find out what's wrong. We'll back you up, Peso. Shellington, stand by to assist. He's got a heartbeat, but very soft and slow. Shellington, any idea what's going on with him? Yes, Captain. When saltwater crocodiles get very cold, their bodies can slow down and go into a kind of sleep where they don't need to eat or breathe air for a long time. So, he'll be fine. After he wakes up, he'll head home. The saltwater crocodile might not know his way home, Quasi, and he may not be able to wake up at all because of the extreme cold. We need to get him back to the octopod and warm him up. But he's too big to fit through the octahatch. I wasn't thinking of bringing him inside the octopod. Octonauts, prepare to warm up a saltwater crocodile. The croc's attached to the octopod cap. He's as snug as a bug. A really big bug. And this will tell us how he's doing. Good. Hey, sir. Stay with him. Everyone else, back to the ship. Dashing, raise the temperature of the octopod as hot as you can get it. Hot. And set a course for the saltwater crocodile's home in Australia. Captain's working. The crocodile's body temperature is warming up. He's not the only one. It's as hot as the Amazon jungle in here. He's breathing again. It means the crocodile is warming up. But now that he's breathed out, the croc is going to need to breathe in. And he breathes air, not water. Which means we need to get him up to the surface fast. Dashy, activate steering wheel. Doing peso. He seems fine. Let me get a bit closer. <laughs> he just tried to chomp me. Don't worry, peso. Saltwater crocodiles snap their mouths open and shut when they get too hot. It helps them cool off. <laughs> oh, uh, he may start thrashing about as well. Now you tell me. If the croc is thrashing because it's too hot, then cooling him off should calm him down. Dashy, lower the octopod temperature, cold as you can get it. I'm on it, Captain. <laughs> the cooling plan is working, Captain. The croc is going back to sleep. Octonauts, it's time to enjoy some chilly indoor temperatures. <laughs> Big warm, warm sunlight on a tropical pirate's cove. We just need to keep the octopod cold a bit longer. Once we reach warmer waters, we can return to normal temperature and let the croc wake up naturally. This is an ice way to travel, eh, Quasi? Australia, Captain. The croc's home is just a few miles ahead. Captain, the saltwater crocodile is moving a bit. I think he's waking up. Dashy, you can return the octopod temperature back to normal. We'll leave the octopod here and use the gups to tow the croc the rest of the way. All right, octonauts, let's bring this big fella home. Oi, 
What's all this? What do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, easy. We're friends. Here to help. Help? Then why am I tied up? Looks like you're trying to capture me. Nobody captures a salty. Whoa! Octonauts! Abandon guts! You can tie me up, but come any closer and I'll chop you down. Please, let us explain how you got here. We found you in the Antarctic. You were lost. And freezing. And so we brought you back here to your home. Yeah, I do remember being lost. Big icebergs everywhere I turned. So cold I couldn't stay awake. Guess you really did help me out. We help all the creatures of the ocean. We're the Octonauts. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Salty. Well, Salty, you have a bruise on your snout. May I bandage it for you? Yeah, go on. And no chomping, please. No chomping. There. Thanks for all your help, fellas. We all need a helping paw now and then, Salty. Even crocs and pirates. Ooh, that sun sure is getting hot. <laughs> Sorry about that, Taya. Uh, didn't mean to scare you, but, uh, you know, I'm awful hungry all of a sudden. Uh, you should probably leave now, mates. You don't have to tell us twice. Goodbye. <laughs> Right. Say, ah. Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just a little shy. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Captain? your accordion music, Captain Barnacles, and it really helps this one relax for his medical checkup. Oh, it was nothing. I hope you haven't caught a cold up here in the Arctic. Oh no, we orcas are used to the cold Arctic weather. <laughs> yes, you're one healthy orca. Thanks, Peso. Thanks, Captain. Bye. Bye, orcas. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. Whew. Six orca throat exams, three fin and tail checkups, and teeth cleaning for the whole pod. What a day. Good work, Peso. But we'd better hurry back to the octopod. With these chunks of ice moving in from all directions, it could get dangerous. It's worse than I thought. Phew, that was close. Captain. I see it. Hang on, Peso. Hey, so, are you okay? I think so. Are you? I'm all right, but I'm not sure the gup is. We need to get it out of this chunk of ice. <laughs> it's no use, we're stuck. What'll we do? Don't worry, we'll get out of this. Let's call the octopod. Professor Inkling. Prepare to meet your match in the game of Pirate Drafts. Have asked. I've got you now. Ha-ha! <laughs> mm. Huh? Ah, no, it looks like I've got you, Quasi. <laughs> ah, I've been suckered. Barnacles to Quasi. Come in, Quasi. We're going to need some help out here. Sound the Octo Alert. Aye, aye, Captain. Yow! Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, the Gup E has crashed. Peso and I are going to need some help getting back to the octopod. We'll have to hurry before the Gup E is hit by another giant chunk of ice. It could break the Gup. That's the problem. The Gup E is stuck in a giant chunk of ice. And we can't get it out. Oh. <gasps> Hang on, mateys. I'll come out in the Gup C to give you a tow. I hope you can find us, Quasi. The crash damaged our Gup Finder. And we're drifting pretty quickly. Hmm. I'm seeing lots of ice chunks, but none with a Gup in it. Better keep looking. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
I do hope Quasi can find us. Oh, it's getting bumpy. Uh-oh, we're heading straight for an iceberg. Flappity flippers. Abandon ship, Peso. Where did the guppy go? Look! Oh no. Don't worry, we just need to climb to the top and break the gup out of the iceberg. Climb to the top? Yes, we can do it. We're a team. Huh. Come on. Yes, we did. Now, the trick will be how to dig our gup out of this ice. Oh, all this moving ice is making me dizzy. I can't tell which way I'm going. Captain, come in, Captain. We've lost radio contact with the gup E, Quasi, but they should be around there. Keep looking. Oh, I've searched everywhere for them, but all I've found down here is ice, ice and more ice. What was that? It sounded like the captain's accordion music. Shiver me whiskers. It's not Captain Barnacles at all. It's the orcas. Maybe they can help. Hey, look! Quasi! I heard your orca songs. I thought it was Captain Barnacles. Captain Barnacles? We just left him and Peso a little while ago. Aye, but they never made it home. The Gup E crashed, and now they're lost somewhere in the ice. Oh, no. oh, dear. Don't worry, Quasi. We orcas will help you find them. Huh? Oh no, the ice is breaking in two. Peso, jump! Hang on! We've got to stay with the gum. Jump again. <laughs> Oh! Peso, use me as a bridge. Yes! Gotcha! Phew. Yeah, we've looked everywhere for him down here. Hey, what about spy hopping? Spy hopping? What's that? Spy hopping is how we look around up above the water. Yeah, watch me, Quasi. Well, I'm no walker, but I'll give it the old pirate try. It. Well done! Thanks, matey. But there's lots of ice up there, too. Better stay with the pod, Quasi. Yeah, we orcas always stick together. Aye, let's start spy hopping! I think I see something. It's Barnacles and Peso. We found them. What's happening? 
Quasi, you found us. I knew you would. Aye, thanks to our orca pals here. But where's the guppy? Um, up there. It's still stuck in the ice. How are we going to get it back in the water? If only we could tip this iceberg back over again. I reckon our orca friends could help. Yeah, we love ice tipping. Ice tipping? It's what we orcas do to find food. We tip the chunks of ice over. Watch. Ready, set, tip! can do everything. Now we can get the Gups home. I just hope we don't crash into another ice chunk on our way back. Orcas, you know your way around these waters. Can you guide us out of here? Of course. Aye, orcas and octonauts always stick together. And I know exactly how to make the trip a little more fun. <laughs> Welcome to Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. It's too cold for pirates. But not for my cousins, the Adelie penguins. I can't wait for you to meet them. Ay, me hearty, but couldn't we meet them somewhere warmer? Adelie penguins don't live anywhere else in the world. Antarctica is their only home. We've come to visit at the perfect time. The chicks have just hatched. And Quasi, Peso and I are going to give their parents a little help. Yeah, what kind of help? Babysitting, of course. Babysitting? Quasi, Peso, to the guppe. Hi, Hi Peso. Peso. Thanks for keeping an eye on the chicks while we swim out into the ocean for food. Mum, Dad, can I come too? I'm not too scared to swim in the ocean. You're still a chick. You haven't grown your seagoing feathers yet. Yeah, Rocco. Grown-up penguins have special feathers that keep us warm in the freezing water. You'll get too cold swimming in the ocean. It could make you sick. Bye, Rocco. We'll be back soon. Keep an extra eye on my Rocco. He's a daredevil, completely fearless. Don't worry. I know the type. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's in the box? Presents for everyone! Oh. <laughs> A rock! A rock. That's right. Adeli penguins collect little rocks to build their nests. See? Line up, everyone, and we'll pass them round. <laughs> My name is Flip, and I'm Flap. Oh, but here's a present for you. And one for you. Your little rock is better than my little rock. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, uh, let's see. Here we go. These two rocks are exactly the same. Thank you. you. Good work, Peso. Captain, there's an iceberg on the moon and it's heading for the octopod. I'm on my way. Peso, Quasi, you'll have to handle the babysitting without me. Yeah, I'll miss all the excitement. Not all the excitement. I'll babysit most of the chicks, and you babysit Rocco. Just Rocco? I can do that with one paw tied behind my back. Flip, flap, come away from that ledge. Phew. Ah, <sighs> well, it looks like it's just you and me. So, what? Rocco? Where'd he go? Rocco! Quasi! That's what my mum always says. <laughs> Let's swap rocks. I want my old rock back. Why? Because it's better. I'm sure the rocks that I gave you were exactly the same. No, my old rock had a brown spot on it and this one doesn't. Let's swap back. No. I'm sure we can work this out. Now, Flip. I'm Flap. He's Flip. Oh, sorry, Flap. You mean Flip. 
Yes, floop. I mean fleep. I mean, oh, flappity flippers. <sighs> Flap, if you flip over your rock, you'll see it has a brown spot just like Flaps. I mean flips. You're right. Flappy now. I mean, happy now. Happy! Phew. See that bird up there? Hi, matey. I like to play a little game with him. Watch this. Hey there, you big beaky birdie! You don't scare me! <laughs> See? Now he's coming to get me. Shiver, whiskers. He is coming to get you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That was close. Rock on me, hearty. You have to be a little more careful. Even in my pirate days, I knew... Where'd he go? Rocco? Quasi! Cannonball! <laughs> I think Captain <laughs> Barnacles has the easy job today. This water is getting rough. Dashy to Captain Barnacles. There's a storm about to hit and it's big. The iceberg has changed direction. It's heading towards... Me! <laughs> Dashy, sound the Octolomers! Octolomers to the HQ. A big storm on the way. <gasps> That's dangerous for the Adeli penguin parents. They could get lost at sea. The storm will blow ice and snow onto the shore. Peso and Quasi will need to find a way to keep the chicks warm. Dashy, contact Peso and tell him to get ready for ice and snow. Already on it, Captain. I'll find and rescue the Adeli penguin parents, but I'll need a bigger gup. Tweak, meet me outside the octopod with the gup sea. Got it, Cap. Octonauts, let's do this. Hang on, penguins. I'm coming to get you. Oh, got you. Two more. Hold tight. On board. Oh, we need a shelter to keep the chicks warm. And we need it fast. Bandages. Bandages? Quasi, throw me bandage rolls as fast as you can. Ready? Aye, but go! Everyone, inside the tent! <laughs> this is so exciting! I don't want to go inside and miss the big storm! Rocco, it's too cold for you out here, matey! Oh, all right! <laughs> that ought to do it! Nice and cosy! Right, Rocco? Where's Rocco? If he's not in here, then he's out there. I'm going after him. Rocco! Rocco! <laughs> Rocco! I'm too cold to move. <laughs> will bring them home. And nothing can stop the captain, matey. <gasps> but a nice 
Spielberg on the beach could really slow him down. <sighs> Not that iceberg again. How will we get home, Captain? Don't worry. The Gulf Sea was built to break through ice. <laughs> Penguins, this could get bumpy. Where's Quasi? Just one more time, eh, matey? Cannon I can't believe we're back in these chilly waters again. It's all in the name of science, Quasi. Indeed, the creatures of the Arctic Zone make some fascinating sounds. And with the octopod's underwater microphone, we can record them for our collection. Ooh, what's making that sound? Oh, uh, just my tummy. I ate some of Tunip's kelp cakes for lunch with a wee bit too much hot sauce. Wait, I'm picking up something else. Listen. Sounds like walruses to me. The computer will match the sound with the animal and we'll see if you're right, Captain. Ah, walruses. Now let me guess the next one. It is a strange sound from a strange creature. And this strange creature could only be the... Herring? Yes, herring. They talk by blowing gas bubbles out of their behinds. Out of their behinds? Ooh, what's that coming from? Sounds like some kind of whale song. It is. Bowhead whales. They only live here in the Arctic, so their sounds can't be recorded anywhere else. Look. Howdy, folks. Hello, we're the Octonauts. Pleased to meet you. That's an enormous head, even for a whale. The head of each bowhead whale is as big as a bus. We're not aiming to brag now, but we bowheads do have the strongest, toughest heads in the Arctic. How tough? Tough enough to smash through just about anything. Yow! And we make some pretty big sounds, too. Ready, boys? getting a perfect recording of them. Bowhead whales sing all the time, while they're traveling, playing, even eating. It's how they talk to each other. It's always nice to make new friends out here on the Arctic range, but now we've got to hit the trail. It's feeding time. Come on, giddy up, partners. Bye, Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, what's that? More whales? It sounds familiar. Narwhals, Captain. Sounds like a call for help. It is. Then we haven't got a moment to lose. Quasi, peso to the launch bay. <laughs> It's coming from inside that ice tunnel. Shiver me whiskers, Captain. Look, there's been an avalanche. They must be somewhere behind all that ice. Ahoy in there! Narwhals! Are you all right? Help us, please! We are trapped in here! We can't get out! <gasps> I know that voice. Boris? Ah, Barnacles, is this you? Yes, old friend. What happened? Me and my two friends, we dove down very, very deep. Everything was good, yes, until the pack ice moved and trapped us in here. 
The ice, it is too thick for a narwhal to punch through. <laughs> and we are almost out of air. Then we need to get you out of there now. Octonauts to the HQ. <laughs> Narwhals are trapped under the ice, and they're running out of air. Jumping jellyfish! Narwhals are whales, and whales breathe air. They can only stay underwater for a little while, and then they need to come up to breathe again. We've got to get them out of the ice, but first, let's get them some air. We'll run a breathing tube down there right away, Cap. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> found a small opening for the breathing tube. Here you go. We're pushing in a breathing tube, Boris. It won't be long now. Da, please hurry, old friend. We're feeling very weak. Uh, it's caught on something. Uh, uh. Yes, that did it. Uh, uh. Oh, there it is. You. Much better. Now that you've got air to breathe, it's time to break through that ice. Dashi, let's try the Gupsy's icebreaker. Icebreaker activated. Not even a crack. Let's bring in the drill. Twig will need the Gup D. <laughs> All right, Cap. I'll have him out of there faster than you can say bunch of munchy crunchy carrots. Novels, back away as far as you can. It's real stuck. That ice is just too thick. stronger to break through this ice, and we need it now. Captain, we could melt the ice with a blowtorch. Good idea, but it would take too long. Hmm. <laughs> How about blasting it with a sonic slicer? The ice is too thick for that. I've got an old pirate cannon under me bed, but I'm all out of cannonballs. That's it. The bowhead whales. Tough enough to smash through just about anything. Good thinking, Tulip. Now all we have to do is find our new bowhead whale friends again. Let's call them back to the octopod by playing their songs. Try it louder, Dashy. We don't have much time. We need your help. Three narwhals are trapped in the ice and we can't break them free. Well, we bowheads are the greatest icebreakers in the seven seas. Ain't that right, boys? Yeah, that's right. right. You ready to take a ride, partner? Captain, help is on the way. Thanks, Dashy. How much longer? <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs>
That's what I call a ride. <laughs> Captain Barnacles, my dear old friend. Thanks to you and your Octonaut crew for saving us. And you two are mighty bowhead whale friends. Oh, shucks, Boris. We're nothing. Always glad to help a fellow whale in need. Yes, thank you, bowheads. It's amazing what you can do when you put your heads together. <laughs> Especially when you've got heads this big. Ain't that right, boys? Happy trails, partners. Yip, 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 yip. Bye. 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 I'm so glad you could visit us here on the Octopod, Orson and Ursa. Uncle Barnacles, can we show Peso our new Polar Scout badges? Of course, Cubs. Peso, my niece and nephew have been working hard. Take a look. That's our Starfinder badge. We learned how to find our way using the North Star. And we got this badge for learning how to make a shelter out of snow. But you're really going to like the next one, Peso. The Seaweed Bandage Badge! <laughs> we learned how to make an emergency bandage out of seaweed. And we got to practice on a real live narwhal. Great work, Cubs. There are lots more badges that we don't have yet. And we're going to earn every single one, just like you, Uncle Barnacles. <clears throat> well, actually, I don't have every single Polar Scout badge. You don't? Really? Are you sure? There is one that slipped through my paws over and over again. I remember the first time I saw a walrus in trouble. Oh, my flipper hurts. I offered to help. Don't worry, I'll move. Move along, little polar bear. We walruses can handle this. Whoa! But I didn't give up. My tusk is stuck. I'd be happy to Ooh, get back. Walrus emergency. And that's how it went every time. Just trying to... Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Huh? Whoa. Uh, 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 uh. And so I never managed to earn my walrus rescue badge. But now, it's time for you cubs to earn your next badge. This one is for swimming through an obstacle course of ice flows. Let's go! Good luck, cubs. Here's your challenge. Swim through this maze of ice flows in under five minutes. I bet I can do it in four minutes. Bet I can do it in three. <laughs> Here we go. On your marks, get set. Huh? I think somebody's calling for help. It sounds like it's coming from the other side of these ice floes. Come on, Cubs, follow me. This could be a real Polar Scout emergency. And these paws are ready for action. Do not be afraid. We are Polar Scouts. And we are here to answer your call for help. We don't want help. We want our mums. Well, perhaps we can help you find your mums. Help us find them. No, no, we want them to find us. That's why we're making all this noise. What are you, anyway? We're walruses, of course. You're too small to be real walruses. Walruses are big. With big, pointy tusks. These are walrus pups. Oh, so they're babies. But we're still 100% walrus. Understood. Where did your mums go? They went to find food. But they've been gone for a really very long time and now we're hungry. Very hungry. Really very hungry. Hmm. Let's see if we can spot your mums out there. Why don't you just go looking for them? We're too hungry to swim very far. And anyways, a mum said to wait right here and not move. So we're not moving. <laughs> An iceberg, and it's moving fast. Her mum said not to move from this ice flow. Well, they didn't say what to do if the ice flow moved. I know what to do. A, 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 A
Cubs, would you show the Octo Alert? Octonaut to the HQ. and I are on a runaway iceberg with three walrus pups. The pups are too weak from hunger to swim very far. And we got to sound the octo alert. We need to get these walrus pups to safety. Captain, we've located your iceberg. We'll be there as soon as... Uh-oh. Shiver me whiskers! You're on a crash course with two other icebergs. Oh, no. When the icebergs crash into each other, you can all get hurt. <sighs> Quasi, Peso, take the Gup S and catch up to us as fast as you can. And please bring something for the walrus pups to eat. They're really very hungry. Tuna, you and the Vegemals can help me prepare some bottles of walrus pup formula. <coughs> We're on our way, Captain. To the Gup S, mateys. <laughs> up to that iceberg and fast. Ready to mix up some walrus pup formula. Rattle, rattle. Yeah, super, It's getting really close. Too close. Move to this side, everyone. No, no it's, it's really, really very close. close. Hold on, everyone. This could get bumpy. to break through the ice. This scurvy ice is too thick. Turn on the heat, Quasi, so the drill melts the ice as it goes. Heating drill now. That speeds things up. Hold on, Captain. Don't worry. Help is on the way. We're getting really... very squished. <laughs> My mum always holds me flipper when I'm scared, and I wish someone would hold me flipper now. <laughs> Here, take my paw. Oh, thanks. That's better. Quasi! Need a lift, mateys! Just in time, Quasi. Come on, everyone, into the Gup S. Activate bottles. And now we need to find their mums. They may have returned to the ice flows by now, so let's start there. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I can help. I don't think so. No, nor me neither. Oh. Easy now. Ladies, I don't like the looks of this one. Oh, here we go again. Mum! 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 Oh, Gordo! There you are! Oh, little Otto! Oh, what a oh, Gordo! Thank goodness 
Oh, are you all right, love? We waited a really very long time, but we were carried off by a really very big iceberg. And then Captain Barnacles and his friends saved us. Huh? He does have that hero look about him, doesn't he? Ladies, how can we ever thank him for saving our pups? Hug! Wow! <laughs> there it is! The Walrus Rescue Badge! Well, well done, done, Uncle, Uncle Barnacles! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain Barnacles. I'm Matey. Come on, everyone join in. Right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs>